Arlington's next and most crucial battle was with Metro over where the subway should go. When they started looking at the routes, just like the Federal Highway Administration did, how can we quickly get through Arlington? It was how can we quickly and cheaply get through Arlington with transit. The original plan was to send that metro line right up the middle of I-66, isolated from people, an obstacle to getting to those stations. And that is one of the cheapest ways to build rapid transit. Uh, you already own the land. If you manage to plan the highway with a wide enough median strip, uh, you can build the highway first and build transit later. It also means that you don't have to really worry about um, going under people's property. Since you own the property, you don't have to worry about crossing major streets because the highway is already bridging those major streets or going under them. Uh, so it, it makes a lot of sense if you're trying to build cheaply. So we were caught on the horns of a dilemma of saying, well, we, you know, we sure want transit, but we sure don't want the way you've got it planned, because that's not going to serve us at all. If they want to reinvigorate the Wilson Boulevard corridor, the best way to do it would not be to send rapid transit to the north along Interstate 66, but to build an underground tunnel underneath Wilson Boulevard itself, and you'd have stations pop up right where Arlington wanted people to be at the department stores, um, at the uh, civic centers, and of course in Roslyn itself. You know, the foresight in terms of the, the alignment of the Orange Line is amazing. It is a, a, a case study of how to do things. Given the federal installations in Arlington, uh, particularly the Pentagon and National Airport, it made a lot of sense to consider those areas near the river to be one of the key destinations for any kind of rail transit system. Um, what's interesting is that Stolzenbach broadens that out and starts thinking a little more about serving corridors through Arlington rather than just those two main destinations. I think per particularly Burt Johnson saw that as a way of, of running down the metro, down the business corridor, as a way of really revitalizing the corridor. He was a professional manager, more so than an engineer, which early city managers in this country were. And I think Burt really began to lay the groundwork for the modern Arlington that we uh, live in today. That was a conscious decision to bring the metro, where it went on the RB quarter, and also the number of stops. Arlington now had to convince the metro board to build lots of stations where they would best serve Arlington's needs. Metro had bought into obviously Roslyn and they'd bought into the Boston, each end. But they're saying we just cannot afford to have the time element involved at all these stops. And we would say, well, look at the density that you'll be passing when you bypass that stop, because this is the office space and this is the residential areas that'll be at those stations. And if you're going to serve density, which you're supposed to do, then you've got to stop there. And it just became wearing them down with facts. Arlington got a lot of attention. The early building was going to be here. The planning was here. Uh, and our views were um, uh, therefore uh, given great, uh, great credence. They became convinced that Arlington really meant what they said about developing Ross and Boston Carter around the metro stations. And um, once they became convinced, then ink went onto the paper. Arlington's vision required many metro stops close together the county seized any opportunity to add stations. There was a station plan uh, at Georgetown. The case for serving Georgetown with a metro station is pretty compelling, and I think most people who live there today would agree with that. The Georgetown re resident feared that hooligans would be coming from Virginia, I guess, and Washington and other places and, uh, and be a problem and a nuisance in, the, in Georgetown streets. And of course the station was going to cost an enormous amount of money. So that money was floating about and uh, we grabbed it in Arlington and uh, 
and uh, got it designated for the uh, station at Virginia Square. Mr. Ricks, didn't any of your colleagues on the Metro Board look at you and say, why are you Arlingtonians so greedy? I could so not greedy? imagine why they let us get away with it. I honestly <laughs> could they could, have put it, they could have put it anywhere. With the route and the stations it wanted, Arlington turned its attention to winning voter approval for Metro funding. Arlington County Board was for it. The Planning Commission was for it. Now then, we had to sell that bond issue. Well, I thought, how are we going to get people excited? So we put this metro car. See, people didn't even know what they looked like. So I brought it and put it in front of old Ken's department store. So people would enter, and they'd have to take a flyer, and then they'd come out. You know. And it was just a steady stream of people. The cars, quiet, roomy, air-conditioned. Automatic train controls will operate cars. So then Just came the election. Means. I always prepare for the worst, thinking maybe it was going to go down, and it passed by 70%. The people have given the word. The word is go. Go.